Perfect. All right. Okay, good deal. I'm just going to make sure it actually shows that we're live. Okay. Hello, everyone. If you're tuning in, um, let's see. It's not. Sh okay. Yep. We are live. It shows we're live. So we are good to go. Um, if you guys are tuning in, comment. I don't know if it will show up. I believe it should. Um, so definitely hop when you hop on, say hi. And Annalisa, hello. Hello. What are you are you drinking anything? You just got home from running errands, but I just got to the store after a long day. I I bought drinks in my car, but <laughs> I, I haven't unfortunately on me yet. <laughs> well so get the store stop. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to get one after for sure. For sure. Perfect, Deborah. Thanks for saying hi. We wanted to make sure everything worked. So that's awesome. All right, everyone. This is Annalisa. If you are joining our Thirsty Thursday interview, it is running a little bit late tonight, but no big deal. Um, it's all about, you know, getting you the content. And um, Annalisa, do you just want to tell us a little bit about you, like where you're from, um, just so people can know a little bit about you? So I was born and raised in Eugene, Oregon. I now reside out closer to Sutherland in the wintertime and now Winchester Bay in the summertime. Um, I was born and raised fishing, hunting, outdoorsy type. My husband is a fishing guide. We own a charter service and just recently bought a tackle store to add to our arsenal. Um, I have six kids. I've got a daughter-in-law soon to be i've got grandkids i've got a whole mess of things <laughs> You're <laughs> busy now. i am i am and now taking over this tackle store i'm definitely going to be on the go talking fishing all day every day so yes I'm about it. that's so exciting um so you just got your new boat right um yeah my husband got a new boat last year yes. um so he just put new motors on it this year and uh, it's a really, it's the biggest boat out of Winchester Bay for a six pack, which means that they only take six anglers at a time, usually yeah. four or five. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and then my son also is a charter and he runs a boat just a couple, couple feet smaller than dad's, but you know, dad's got to keep him in check. <laughs> yeah. Well, dad's got to have the big boat, right? Yeah, dad does have to have the big boat, the biggest <laughs> boat in the fleet, you know, as they say. <laughs> so you, you guys I sound like a fishing family. So that's awesome mm -hmm. too. Um, and you said you always grew up fishing? Or did I did ever since I was little. I'm the oldest of six kids myself. So my dad was a timber faller, so if I wanted alone time with my dad, it was let's go fishing, let's go hunting mm -hmm. before work, afterwards. Mm -hmm. So it's just always been in my blood. Yeah. So, well, that's why we have you on because you're going to know all things, you know, fishing, and we want to know. Yeah. We want to yeah, know about the specific. Yeah, yeah. In, in in Oregon, especially fishing now, fishing out of the ocean. I grew up fishing the rivers. Uh, mm -hmm. Only within the last ten or so years have I really started fishing the ocean, and in the last eight years, especially, you know, in running a charter service, you have to know everything in regards to ocean. Yeah. Was that kind of a hard transition to do the river versus the ocean and, you know, doing the charter fishing and stuff? It was. And it was really interesting to learn. I think the first, my first hiccup was learning that a coho and a silver are both the same type of salmon and a chinook and a king are the same type of salmon. Learning that a single fish can have multiple names and learning, you know, what a springer is and compare it to a fall Chinook and just all of these different terms that they use. Um, and then, you know, knowing when a fish is running and where to fish it, how to fish it. Then you get guys sometimes that call and say, oh, I'd rather talk to your husband. And I give my phone to my husband and then he goes, why are you talking to me? Talk to her. She does yeah. it all. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> but there's every once in a while there'll be questions. I'm like, um, let me check because I'm not 100% right. sure. But right. it is interesting and, and challenging at times. But I find it difficult too with the names of fish. Like, mm -hmm. everyone calls them different. And you're like, wait, what? It does. What yeah, saying? exactly. <laughs> That's the oh, same fish. That like, I don't understand. <laughs> that, is, that is the case for sure. Yeah. So, okay. We want to learn today and our viewers want to learn today about, is it Ling Cod? Ling Cod. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so, so I think cod and rockfish kind of go hand in hand out here. Um, normally when you're fishing for one, you're fishing for the other with a small exception. Um, mm -hmm. So lean cod are traditionally your, you know, you see those a lot in your fish and chips. They're mild white fish. They're mm -hmm. an ugly, ugly fish. I sent you a couple of pictures yeah. earlier. They have really big heads and lots of teeth. It's definitely not a fish you want to grab by the mouth because it will rip all the skin off of your thumb. Oh. Um, yeah, they have a lot of sharp little teeth. Uh, a lot of times when you bring up other fish, you can see where the ling has tried to grab the fish and they've just got the teeth marks down the fish. Um, yeah. And then, so in Oregon, we have mm -hmm. two different fisheries for those. We have ling cod and rockfish, which, so different, different bays, different reefs, different depths. There's all of these rules and regulations that go along with it. Mm -hmm. so we have a ling cod and rockfish fishery, and then we have a straight rockfish. Now, the, the rockfish are the same as the ling cod, just a real mild white fish. Um, your ling cod, you know, 20, 30, 40 pounds. Your rockfish, one to eight or nine pounds. Um, it depends on your depth. It depends on if they're, excuse me, male or female if they're full of eggs. I mean, all those things go mm -hmm. into the size of your fish. At a Winchester Bay, which is where we are, we do deep water, which you're down 300 feet of water. So you're usually pulling up the bigger fish. Um, yeah. So that can be interesting. You can pull up three, four fish at a time. So wow. you never know what you're going to pull up. Uh, another really interesting thing with ling cod is occasionally with what they're feeding on, it can turn the fish blue. So they're this oh. really pretty aqua blue color. And mm -hmm. when you clean them out, they stay that way until you cook them. At what point the meat turns white. So <laughs> that's like, even the meat is that that way. It, it, it's part of the algaes and stuff that are down there that when they're mm -hmm. feeding on them, you just occasionally pull it up. It's a really pretty aqua blue color. So. so it doesn't lose its color when it comes out of the water then? Nope. It's it doesn't it. lose its color until you cook it. And then when you cook it, it turns white. Wow. So, Whoa. Yeah. So, so you guys fish the deep water. How long does it take you to reel in a fish then that's that deep? So we cheat. Um, we use electric reels because it is okay. down deep. Uh, yeah. Your weight is two pounds. And then if you've got a 30, 40 pound fish and possibly a couple rockfish, mm -hmm. it can be quite, quite challenging. So we use electric reels to bring it up to close to the boat and then you hand crank them the rest of the way. Mm -hmm. But you still hold the rod, you still feel the height of the fish. Mm -hmm. There's, no, sorry, me. There's no definite loss in that. It just makes it so you're not constantly trying to hand crank up because mm -hmm. it can. And even with the electric reels, it can take a while because if the fish are really, really big, they'll mm -hmm. keep, you know, they'll dive mm -hmm. right back down from you and they have the advantage for sure. Yeah, and with the electric reels, I know when we were down in Florida, we they used one of those too. And it's kind of you have to kind of know what you're doing with them too, mm -hmm. so that the line doesn't spool. Um, and yeah, I actually you had a, you know people that have used them. Actually, you know some people say, "Oh, it, you're losing the fight." I mean, it's not really fishing, but I, I mean, I've heard it is because it it is kind of you have to watch it, and you still, like you said, feel everything. And you have to control the speed that the fish is coming up. You don't want to pull them up too fast. At the same time, you don't want to pull them up too slow. So I actually have, this is the electric reel. So those who don't know what they look like, yeah, um, they have a gear here that controls your, you know, how fast it comes up and goes down. Mm -hmm. um, and it has a line counter and everything else on it, but that's, they're heavy duty. They're a heavy, they're a heavy reel. But it does make it a lot nicer. And it's nicer when we have kids on the boat, too. You know, you get right. them with those kids and they want to reel in the fish and they're able to. They think it's cool. They think it's yeah. cool to play with the lever and make it come <laughs> up. And, up so, and I, well, I can't imagine a little kid trying to reel up a fish that's that deep. I've seen it. My my kids, um, my youngest my youngest daughter is, you know, she's only 11. So uh -huh. she gets out there and she's, you know, all, all about the electric yeah. reels, especially with halibut. You know, those are something we'll use a lot with our halibut fisheries too. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they, they love it because they can control that and feel like they're actually, you know, reeling in and fighting the fish. Right. Um, it looks like Rochelle had a, a question. How are the link caught out in Winchester Bay these days? She said, went out Newport two weeks ago and had no luck. So a couple of weeks ago, everybody had an off bite. There was something about, 
I don't know if it was the moon or what, but mm -hmm. every guide up and down the coast had a really difficult time catching their fish. Um, now, this week, the ocean's been flat and beautiful, and the bite is back on. It was just for some reason, there was like three Isn't days. That weird? It, it was really weird. Like, nobody was catching fish, and normally that's a really productive fishery for us. Mm -hmm. So, it's the bite's back on. You can tell her the bite is back on. Yeah. So when you say, um, you know, there's fishery, I guess, um, that's a term that I, I'm not used to here. So then is it certain parts of the ocean area or? Yeah. So the, the department ODFW, the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife controls our fisheries. So it decides when we can fish, what we can fish for, what depths we can fish for them. Like I said, with lean cod, you can usually go all year round near shore. In the, in the shallower waters, like out of mm -hmm. Charleston, Coos Bay, Newport does have some of those closer reefs mm -hmm. where the water is not so deep, where you are able to fish ling cod year round. Now they'll change mm -hmm. how many rockfish you can keep, but the ling cod is pretty common. Now for us, because we're all deep reefs, they mm -hmm. only from usually it's April or May, depends on how nice they are, mm -hmm. to October, we cannot keep ling cod. We can only keep the rockfish. So we have to do this. Uh, what's called a long leader rock fishery. So it's, you know, you down off the bottom, you have mm -hmm. to keep your stuff suspended up a little bit and mm -hmm. you can only keep rock fish mm -hmm. and keep any lean cod. Mm -hmm. So and that usually goes, you know, so there's, that's, there's different seasons. There's different, same with the yeah. halibut. Um, you know, mm -hmm. at times you can do near shore, at times you can do all depth, at times you can keep rock fish and lean cod with halibut, at times you can't, at times you can, yeah, it's, there's so much going on. <laughs> How do that's you keep this straight? <laughs> it's, it's hard. And that's why a lot of times people just go with us because they don't want to mm. have to try and figure out what and where and how deep. Okay, like, and, uh, can I keep this? Can I can't keep like. And there's, yeah. And there's fish like a canary and a yellow eye. They're very similar looking fish. They're both bright orange. They're very mm -hmm. similar in looks. Mm -hmm. the, the slightest difference. The, you know, the eye does look a little yellower. That's the yellow eye. And then there's usually black along the bottoms of their fins where a canary does not have that. As my son says, fins and black, throw them back because you cannot <laughs> keep a yellow eye fish. So there's little hey, things. whatever works, like, you it know. Does. It does work. Um, so there's tricks like that that do help with, you know, with knowing what you can keep. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my phone does ring often and go, hey, I caught this fish. Is this something we can keep? Or mm -hmm. my husband's out there and people will ask him, is this a fish we can keep? And, you know, you, but you do, you have to know because it is a big fine. Um, just like if you do pull up a yellow eye, you have to send it mm -hmm. back down to the bottom. Now with rockfish, when you bring them up, their, their swim bladders will come up out through their mouths. So you oh. have to, yeah, it's, it's weird looking. It looks like, really bizarre looking. So you have to actually put them on a special hook to send them back down. So you Otherwise, have to just float. Oh, so you literally have to like put rehook the fish and then yep. send it back down to the bottom. We have special descenders that we use that will take it and send it back down, and then you give it a jerk and it pops the fish off and supposed to work doesn't always work but yeah I was like how can yeah. you even <laughs> yeah, we sent it back always, down like yeah yeah it does not always work but it's you know it's what we try and what we're supposed to do so yeah is it the certain seasons based on you know like their mating seasons and stuff is that kind of how they're looking at it yeah, yeah. and you know it in with the deeper you know with the deeper links those tend to be the bigger links they want to preserve those and let those yeah. females do their thing down and not be Right. You know, not taken, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, that does. So, what do you guys use then to fish for them? Um, like so, baits and, and things like that. I think that would be interesting for, for people to know. Okay. So, I can actually, because I'm at the store, so I can show you. Most of the guides here use ugly stuff, but it's cheap. Um, this right here is a copper pipe that's got a hook on it, it's about two pounds worth of weight. That mm -hmm. is what we use to catch our ling cod. Um, we will put bait on this on occasion, but sometimes mm -hmm. it's just the pounding. So ling cod live in the reefs. They live down in the mm -hmm. rocks. So it's just the pounding of that weight on the bottom that mm -hmm. irritates them, catches their attention, and gets them butt to bite. Mm -hmm. um, and then when it comes to the rock fish, there's multiple different shrimp flies. Some people use, you know, different grubs of different sizes and colors. Mm -hmm. Um, but what's interesting and what has 
been working very odd. So as <laughs> this is this is kind of my interesting story. So as I said, I grew up fished in the rivers mm-hmm. and I was seeing if I had one open, but it doesn't look like I do. Um fish in the rivers and everything else and salmon and steelhead. And you know, you always put yarn on to use for scent and things of that sort. Well, my boys were using those rubber grubs like I showed you. And after about two fish, lo and behold, they'd rip the tail off the grub or the scent would come off and they'd have to resent mm-hmm. it. And we were, it was costing us a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Small family owned business. I'm like, okay, we've got to figure something out. This is crazy. Mm-hmm. We're losing money. So one day I looked at my son and I go, hey, I'm going to tie something up for you. And I pulled this uh, yarn out put it on the hook. And I showed my husband, my husband's like, I run a quarter of a million dollar boat. I am not fishing with yarn. Go, <laughs> you bring yarn he, out. he goes, no, I'm not. So I went to my son, right. I go, hey, try this for me. Cause he was at the time deck handing for dad. Uh-huh. So he puts it out, takes it out and puts it out on the lady's hook and lady drops down and sure enough, boom, catches fish. So my husband's like, oh, this is going to be a great day. Great day. Didn't know what Cole was using. Uh huh. So she drops down again, boom, more fish. And he's like, what is going on? So he calls Cole in and he goes, Cole, why are these, why is this lady out catching the other guys? And Cole goes, I use mom's yarnies. And he goes, oh shit, I'm never going to hear the end of it. (laughs) This is what it is. It is yarn weighted on hooks. There are two hooks on here and it holds the point. That is all I've got it in all, I do it in all different colors. But that is that is the yarnies. They are now. So when called, you see the scent, is it? What do you mean? Like, do you spray it with something, or we use different procure gels? Um, okay. So this is for us. Just these. I can't do this very well. This procure. Here we go. Oh, okay. Just a squid gel, um, and then they just really, you know, rub it into that yarn, mm-hmm. and it holds that scent for longer because it's not the plastic. It's that's holding that scent and they don't yeah. rip our tail off of that because it's yarn yeah. so they can use... it just strings off <laughs> right? but i actually have a whole line of them at the store now and they call it mama knows best because hey mama knew best yeah. um but they I sell that. that's so cool most of the guides in winchester bay now run those and i've actually found that i'm selling them and and mailing them off to other locations and other people go, Hey, what about those yarnies that I've heard so much about? Yeah. So Look at that. As, yeah. So as a woman and thinking outside the box and it's been, you know, it's been really productive, but you know, some people still do. They stick to the traditional mm-hmm. worms, like I said, or there's a, there's a very traditional shrimp fly that this is just your traditional shrimp fly. Mm-hmm. I mimicked the, for the rock fish, right? You That's said the fish. Uh-huh. The, you know, there are other, you know, jigs and lures you can use for the lingcod. They're really expensive, you know, mm-hmm. 15, 20 bucks for one. And because you are fishing in rocks, you mm-hmm. lose one real quick. Yeah. And it gets really expensive really fast. That's why a lot of the anglers will use those copper pipes. They don't get snagged up as easy. And or if you lose the yarn. Yeah. Yeah. Or the <laughs> yarn. Yeah. <laughs> um, but they don't, and it's so you, you know, and those yarns, so it's two hooks when we're doing lingcod and rockfish, and I do three hooks when we're doing long leader rock fishing, and it's extremely productive. So, you know, it, it was interesting to learn that that worked. <laughs> yeah, I think it's interesting just learning that, you know, even the scent thing, I mean, maybe that's something people do around mm-hmm. in Wisconsin, but nothing that I'm familiar with. It must just, I don't know if that is just a saltwater thing or not, but um I thought that was interesting. I think it's all interesting. So what is the biggest um, of both of those that you've gotten? You know, I think lingcod wise, probably 35 ish pounds, maybe more. I've caught so many that it's hard to know for sure. Rockfish are probably eight, you know, an eight pound rockfish. We've mm-hmm. caught some really big ones. Some of them, fortunately, the really big ones are the yellow eyes you have to send back down. So you take a picture oh, and you yeah. send it back down there because you can't have it. But yeah. um, but they're they're fun and they're really a good eating fish. I think for mm-hmm. most people that like the white fish, that is a preference. Yeah, I think that was um something to um let me see. I'm just looking at um so deborah wants to know why um you know the lingcod has been you know 
become so popular for eating now? Have you always eaten that? Or sounds like maybe it wasn't a popular fish to eat or? Well, like I said, most of the time your lingcod and rockfish are what you're finding when you're going to a seafood restaurant ordering fish and chips. They're a real mild white fish. Mm -hmm. um, they're easy to catch. They're super easy to, you know, to prep. You can cook them so many ways. You can mm -hmm. do the traditional deep fry. Um, I, mm -hmm. I like to take the lingcod, just, you know, put some butter in a pan, real basic garlic, salt, pepper, some Parmesan cheese. Um, you know, you can do a lingcod chowder. They're very versatile fish. And I think that that's what it is. Um, mm -hmm. That's that's what the draw is, is because it is. It's so easy to cook, to eat. You're not overly fishy smelling or overly fishy tasting. I think salmon can be that way. It can be a very mm -hmm. fishy tasting fish. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that's what's bringing it into popularity. And it's fun to catch. It really is fun to catch all those different, those rockfish can be orange. They can be brown and green. They can be blue. They can be black. Yeah. They don't know. So. Yeah. So what, um, what times of year are the best to fish for those in your area? So. For lingcod, definitely early season, um, you know, when nobody's really been out there a whole ton, there's, they're always very abundant. They're, I've got my husband giving me pointers in the background. <laughs> <laughs> he can and come say hi. <laughs> yeah, and he's laying on the floor back there. And then again, later in the season, um, October, November, December, because there's not a lot of other fish to be caught during that time. Mm -hmm. And the ocean tends to be calm in the winter, you know, it doesn't tend to be real rough. Uh, so, you know, it, it gives you a chance to get out there and get some fishing done. So it's the winter months when you say the early season. Mm -hmm. And then um, how does, so you guys run a charter. And if uh -huh. I want you to, to talk a little bit about that, um, maybe, you know, how far in advance, where one, where you guys are located, um, how far in advance people should book with you guys, um, any other info, um, too, I think would be good just because if people are out in that area or want to plan a trip out there, um, we definitely want to get some ladies with you. Yeah. And I mean, do you go on the charter as well, or is it more just your husband I, and the kids? For the I first? can be, I can be persuaded. You know, there are definitely groups that say, Hey, would you please come fish with us? <laughs> um, there have been times that, you know, I need a break and I will go jump on the boat. Um, mm -hmm. You know, with, with it, I do book for my husband and my son. I also book for multiple other charters in the area. Everybody mm -hmm. again, being those six pack charters, most everybody running cabin boats, which is nice. Mm -hmm. We do have the only boat that has an actual toilet on it. Most other people get yes, a girls. <laughs> we, have, yes, we have a door and you go down in the cab and you actually get to use a real toilet. Uh, we actually have this is the water. boat you need to be on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you want to go with my husband. Um, and then, uh, <laughs> um, and then you know, usually during the week is always easier to book with on the weekends, of course, but there mm -hmm. are sometimes like halibut's always a Thursday, Friday, Saturday for the all depth. Mm -hmm. So, you know, obviously those are weekends, um, you know, tuna is really popular out of our area too. Uh, you know, and it's a lot of times with those fisheries, cause we don't know when the fish are coming in. Mm -hmm. I'll say, Hey, let me know what, you know, what you want to fish for when you want to fish and I'll call you when the fish are in that way they're not booking. And then, not having fish be there because we yeah. won't we won't take people out if we don't feel fairly confident we're going to catch mm -hmm. fish. You know, mm -hmm. There's never a guarantee. Um, somebody actually commented on a post the other day. Well, do you guarantee fish? No, yeah. we don't guarantee. No. <laughs> but we're going to do our best to try and put the fish out there mm -hmm. for you. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and and really try to make sure. But we always tell our anglers very honestly, "Hey, this is how it's been. Do you still want to go? And if yeah. they don't want to go." that's understandable. It's money, you know, depending on your price, half day charters or 175 full day, 325 yeah. to 350, mm -hmm. you know, so it gets expensive, you know, throw crabbing in there and, and you're, you're putting a pretty penny yeah. out. So, yeah. So, um, name of, I don't think you mentioned the name. Uh, Are you, <laughs> people can find you. I know, yeah. uh, we'll put it in too. I'll try to put it in the link here okay. for people that are watching the replay. I don't think I said that in the beginning, but if you are, please put hashtag replay. So we know that you are watching the replay, but, um, yes. Name of your website, winchesterbaycharters.com. Of course we're out of Winchester Bay, Oregon. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, so Salmon Harbor tackle is the tackle store that we just purchased. 
Um, and we've really just gone through and done a ton in regards to making sure we have everything. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, having myself in here, I think and having two would women call to book for their husbands or book for their families, they mm -hmm. feel a little more confident talking to a woman and not a man. Yeah. Um, you know, we've got groups of ladies that come back and go with my husband. We don't, you know, we've got young kids, older people we're not, you know, we don't turn people away unless, you know, we can't physically accommodate them. Um, yeah. We had a guy a couple weekends ago that's in a wheelchair part of the time. And so he would, you know, they'd wheel him on down and throw him mm -hmm. in the boat and then <laughs> wheel him back up when he was done. And so, you know, we really try to make sure everybody has a good time. Um, you know, my husband is, I don't know if he's in your shot. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> He's actually a ton of fun. And my son does really well. All my guides, I really make sure that I would want to go out with and not, you know, not just send them out with people who are fuddy duddies. Well, that's awesome. Um, if anyone does have any further questions for Annalisa, let us know in the comments. Um, she'll try to answer those, you know, throughout the week if anyone gets questions or they're watching the replay. Um, and then, you know, definitely check out her website. We'll post that here um any questions let her know do you want to share your instagram for people to follow all your fun fishing I'm adventures on an instagram i haven't quite got that far yet working on it um but winchester bay charters has a facebook page i am totally not opposed to people yes. friending me personally on facebook mm -hmm. um you know all of that is is good and fine uh, you know, I, I love seeing other women out there. I think it's great this whole, you know, support women and get women going mm -hmm. and, you know, feel free to ask questions and not feel intimidating. Yes. Uh, my husband, my husband is very, you know, when he's got women on the boat, he doesn't treat them any differently. He doesn't, you know, every once in a while, he's a little bit ornery and teases them a little bit. Um, <laughs> well, that's okay. You know, we need that. <laughs> him and his deckhand have a lot of fun out there, uh -huh. uh, you know, and really try to make things comfortable. And, you know, th at the end of the day, you want to have a good time. You know, you can't always catch the fish. You can't always, but, you know, hopefully you'll go home and say, hey, I had a great time. I really enjoyed, you know, the people I was with, uh, you know, Hopefully you get the fish. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, you know, just thanks again for sharing everything. Ling cod and rockfish. I learned the blue that the blue rockfish. I that is on now on my bucket list. Well, <laughs> you know, if you're over out this way, yes. Just let me know. I will get you mm -hmm. on a boat. I'll I'll post a picture in the comments of this of some of the blue yeah. ling cod that we have actually put on the boat and some of the different. You know, you, there's yes. A Please share pictures. Videos. You would love to see, see those. the teeth. Yeah, see the mm -hmm. teeth of the fish. So, mm -hmm. and then did you say you had a? Do you want to? Yes, hear because I was late. Your little giveaway. <laughs> Yes, I was late because I was a slacker. No, not really. I just time difference threw me a little bit. And then I was like, oh, crap. So <laughs> so another fun thing that I stole my husband's fishing gear for, and I don't know if I, I think I have, to, I have to pull this up because I can't. So here, these are all earrings that I have made out of fishing lures. Everything on here is fishing related. So I love those. Anybody who has decided that they are going to listen in or watch later, I'll pick a name at random and then let them pick out and I will send a pair of earrings off to them. Just kind of something, you know, fun. Some of them glow in the dark. So I do tell to warp, warn people. <laughs> All of a sudden they're <laughs> and some of the other ones make noise when they hit the wind. I love the glow in the dark idea. I don't know why people haven't thought about that earlier. Yeah. Yeah, and sometimes, like I said, some of those, like these guys here, they spin in the wind. And I was walking down the road, and I'm like, "Do you hear that, honey?" He's like, "Hear what?" <laughs> I was trying to figure out the weird noise. That was it's ear. like <laughs> <laughs> so, so. If you want the earrings, ladies, uh, comment. Um, yeah. If you want them, anyways, and you don't win the giveaway, um, just message Annalisa too, and mm -hmm. she'll she can get you hooked up with those. Um, well, thanks again, girl. I would cheers, yeah. but you didn't get time to get a drink. I, I know. I feel, I've got now. I got nothing. <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> It'll be like a virtual. Yeah, drink. here we go. We'll, we'll yeah. virtually. <laughs> oh, wait, I have a cup here. Empty yeah, here. there we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in, and thank you so much, Annalisa. <laughs> Thank you. Hope everybody has a great time out there. Yes. Have a good night. You too.